Hold on. Just a moment, everyone. I need you do a thing. No, I didn't need to. Ah! Hold on. Hold on, everyone. No, it's not even that. It's not even that. Hold on. Okay. That. Okay. Uh -huh. ah! uh, we're very professional here. See, we're all we're all good. We're all set up. There we go. Okay. All right. We're fine. Everything's fine. I'm all right. Fine. Thank you. How are you? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Look, large leak. Very dangerous. Um, uh, did you know Harrison Ford didn't rehearse that scene? No. He, 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 and he told everyone, he, he like read the lines once and then went in and said, I just want to go in blind so I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he absolutely did. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, all right, let us do this. Um, welcome, everyone, to the latest anime news for the week ending July 3rd, 2021. Um, this week in unexpected and possibly concerning live-action anime adaptations, Deadline has reported that Sony's Columbia Pictures has ordered a feature film script based on Akihiro Tsukushi's Made in Abyss manga. Vertigo and Masi Oka from Mobius Productions, who previously collaborated on the 2017 Death Note film, as well as the currently in production live action Promise Neverland series, are producing the project. Um, uh, writer and director Kevin McMullen will also pen the script. He previously wrote and directed the drama film Low Tide, and his next project is set to be the horror film First Harvest. There are not a lot of anime that I can think of as being less suited <laughs> to a live action adaptation than an anime series about two children descending into basically James Cameron's avatar and meeting a furry. And then episode 12 happens, <laughs> or 10, or whatever it is. Oh! <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry I was about that. Because it, it was it was such a horrible, horrible thing. Mm -hmm. And it was just, and as soon as I heard that, I, you know, read that in, in that it was the same person. Vertigo but, Entertainment mm -hmm. and Masioka. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh. oh <laughs> this, it, I was just like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, so this is set up to fail. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now. It's yeah, that's an interesting fail. question. Yeah, it, it, is this just like, fail. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's meant to do anything. I think it's a tax. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, mm, yeah. that could be. Here's a question. Um, so for those not familiar, Made in Abyss is about um, a, a girl whose mother is didn't come back from this giant abyss. That's this sort of a dungeon exploration uh, environment. She finds this sort of robot boy. They go down into the abyss to try to find her mother. Um, and let's just say at the end, a very bad thing happens to one of those characters that is yeah. shown very clearly on screen. Um, and then they meet up with another character and we find out her tragic backstory, which has some very disturbing imagery. Um, how would you make this work as a Hollywood movie? Meaning, there's no way in heck it's actually going to be, like, 12-year-olds. Right? It, well, it can't be. Right. Like, they're, they're just not going to do it's, that. It, it, it's, it, it, it literally, that's what I'm saying. It's set up to fail. Mm -hmm. Because you would have to change everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you would literally have to. It would not be the anime. Yeah. In it's, order first, to make it work. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, first it would not all, be. Yeah. You're, yeah and and you're, for the oh, one boy. scene, Jesus. Mm -hmm. For that mm -hmm. one scene. Which is now, horrifying and heartbreaking yeah. at the same time. And, yeah. and and the problem with that scene is that it's set up. 
right? Like yeah. that is they're, they're building to that throughout the entire. Yeah. And like like I said before, I don't have a problem with it happening. I have a problem with it being shoved in the audience's faces for like three minutes straight. Yeah. Um. So I well, don't I know how you don't do that. As long as you make the mother Olympia Dukakis, Scarlett Johansson plays the girl looking for Olympia Dukakis, Dwayne the Rock Johnson plays the robot boy, and Michael Bay is attached for uh, technical expertise and make it a base explosion extravaganza. That is frighteningly possible. <laughs> that's I, I, that's I mean, how you make this uh, the wonder hit of the summer of 2025. Oh, right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then everybody on the staff gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> They're put on and a it's plane. A thing. The plane is never <laughs> seen again. Yeah. Float off into the Pacific, never yeah. seen again. <laughs> and and the problem is, like, given the, the what the abyss looks like, like that's hideously expensive to make. Like you, you can't just restructure that to make it cheaper, without completely right. reinventing it from scratch. Um, yeah, I just don't know how I do it. Other than, um, I guess you could tell a story about them without going into the abyss. Like, in the town. Have it just a story of them just, you know, doing yeah, stuff. And maybe they get a little bit that. into the abyss. Maybe, maybe, maybe they get, you know, onto the first le- uh, level. Um, and, like, that's the end of the movie. I think you solve the entire technical problem of the abyss mm. by going to the Cal Arts 3D modeling class, mm. and you make this their thesis project, <laughs> <laughs> and that they sit down and they program all of this to make the abyss a 3D modeled wonderland, mm. and then you green screen Scarlett Johansson and Dwayne the John Rock Johnson into that. <laughs> There's a. Uh... There's a, a YouTube oh. group that, that uh, calls him Rock the Dwayne Johnson, um, and I just I just love that. It's like <laughs> so, uh, so. There we go. There's that. That's yeah. how you get the. Yeah, I don't. I mm, student, I, student I student art. I, I think <laughs> whoever's making that film are staring into the abyss right now, trying to figure out how to please their corporate masters on that one. I, I thought we were actually watching this stream, and right now there's a large royalty check on yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> if only. Yeah, wow. Well. Um, moving along, almost two years have passed since the tragic, deadly arson attack on the Kyoto Animation Studio One building. The Kyoto Anime website announced this week that they will be streaming a special memorial video on their YouTube channel on July 18th, the anniversary of the fire, to commemorate those who were lost. The video will begin streaming at 10.30 a.m. Japan time. It'll run for around 10 minutes with a moment of silence in the middle. It'll remain available on the YouTube channel for the rest of the 18th. The announcement notes that they had considered holding an in-person memorial ceremony but decided to online live stream due to COVID-19. Um, it also requests that people refrain from visiting the site of the building and sending flowers or monetary gifts as they will be gratefully declined. Uh, the announcement states, We sincerely express our gratitude for your continued kindness and support. Um, um, and uh, with grief in our hearts, we've been producing animations while supporting each other and then have kept moving forward day by day since then, end quote. Um, very sad, but worth worth noting, and I'm glad that they are continuing the, the remembrances. It's, it's yeah. important. And I thought I saw... Kyo Annie oh. did um, Kobayashi, mm-hmm. Dragon Maid. Yep. And I thought I saw an article that said there is a there's a credit... In episode one of season two, mm. for the um, for the storyboarding that was done by one mm. of the one of the creators that died in the fire, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that they kept they made that uh, you know a point of making sure that his credit is known nice. because even though he wasn't around for the actual animation process of it, his contribution to that episode nice. one was right. was key to it. So I, just, uh. I saw that I was just like. Oh, that's heart crushing. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, that's great they're doing that, but it's so sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah. happened? So. Yeah, it's, it was a tragedy. No, no question. Yeah. Uh, moving along as unawkwardly as possible, um, you might remember us talking about the Art of Anime and Everything Cool auction a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, well, the bidding officially took place last weekend, and the U.S.'s first major anime auction was a record-breaking success. Good. The auction attracted a record 2,853 bidders from across the world. Oh. 
uh, set record-breaking prices on a number of anime sales, none of which I got, and sold more than 2.1 million US dollars overall. Needless to say, Heritage Auctions is already planning a second one. Uh, the auction also achieved sell-through rates of 100% by value and 99.8% by lots sold. Sells from classics like My Neighbor Totoro and Akira brought in incredible bids. The Totoro cell pictured, um, showing Satsuki and Mei in the rain with their umbrella, drew in 69 bids before winning uh, $84,000, nearly 17 times its wow. pre-auction estimate. Um, to be clear, cells uh, from Ghibli films now regularly go for upper hundreds at the very least. Um, yeah. Yeah. A cell of the sister standing in front of the cat bus received 45 bids and sold for $72,000, which is almost 29 times its initial pre-auction estimate. An Akira cell featuring Canada on the motorcycle oh. was won for $78,000 after initially estimating selling for $5,000 and a series of four other Akira cells sold for $78K. Clearly... There are anime collectors out there with a whole lot of money to spend on their favorites. Yeah, no, no joke. joke. Wow. I, I, I was just I was just laughing at myself because I could just totally have seen myself going, uh, oh, I'll put in for fifty dollars. <laughs> so on, on the other end just went, Oh, bid number three hundred twenty eight, fifty dollars. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, a guy in a top hat and a little mustache and a bottle of Santa. <laughs> Oh, fifty dollars! <laughs> I would like to bid five thousand dollars. <laughs> like, oh, damn it! <laughs> yeah, we got all no, hoity-toity no. on us, have we now? Well, this is the interesting thing: is that anime merchandise, you know, certainly sells for a lot, but we haven't seen these sorts of prices before. Um, right. Obviously, on eBay, things like this. Again, we we see thousands of dollars for for Ghibli sells for for really good ones. But the fact that we're seeing these sorts of things means there are people willing to spend that kind of cash on it. Yeah. Which is impressive. Yeah, when you go to a, not that eBay's not legit, but when you yeah. go to like Sotheby's kind of auction right. yeah. kind of thing, right. where it's like, okay, now it's not just people like overestimating grossly like something that was produced in the trillions. Yeah. Like, oh, this keychain right, yeah. of Canada. <laughs> it's like, that thing cost two cents mm -hmm. and it's only worth $10 and you want it for $500. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? This is like a full on legit auction kind of yeah. deal where it's like, right. yep, that, that means things are coming up in the world of, mm -hmm. of anime. Invest now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, save your Akira cells. Oh, <laughs> All those Oculus cells you have sitting around in the somewhere. So, as I say, somebody, somebody yeah. in Japan right now is like thumbing through their file drawer, <laughs> like, "What did I keep? Oh, I kept the production notes. Oh, that's gotta be worth yeah, something." Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, some rough sketches. That's oh, work. one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm curious about is what other production artifacts are going to yeah. start showing up that people are going to start, you know, making available storyboards. Like, I, I'd love to see more storyboards available. Um, so it and as you see things like $78,000 yeah. for Canada on the bike, mm -hmm. yeah, you might see storyboard showing up real soon. I'm surprised yeah. more production committees don't do this, like, directly, to finance the anime. Yeah, but do you think if they had done that for Akira... <clears throat> in the process of making Akira, do you, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you're if to, the studio yeah. behind Laid Back Camp... <laughs> offered sells to you right now, John, would you buy them? I would crawl over both <laughs> <of them. laughs> no. um, Only because it's proven. You know what I mean? If right. they laid that right. up, like I could understand doing that for season two. So you get... Oh yeah, I mean afterwards. Yeah, I mean afterwards. Yeah, I was going yeah, yeah, yeah. to say, it's, like, it's hard to sell it as like, oh, it's going to premiere in two weeks. Do you want to buy some? Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, if this yeah, is any good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I totally agree. Like, mm -hmm. I think after season one of something, if you were like, okay, this is wildly popular, mm -hmm. could you imagine prior to Mugen Train launching, mm -hmm. them being like, well, what do we do with these? And then after Mugen Train, you're like, well, should we just finance everything forever? <laughs> sure. Let's sell some cells from yeah. Mugen Train. <laughs> like, you know, aha. <laughs> the, the original Evangelion cells were kept locked in the vault for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And the, the the belief was it was exactly for that reason. Like these are just increasing in value. The more we keep them in there, mm -hmm. yep, totally. It's like that um, is a good way to self finance if you don't if you're tired of the committee mm -hmm. system. Yeah, possible, possible. But it's got to be a hit. 
Right. You know I mean? yeah. It's got to yeah. be it. Otherwise, well, and I can see. Yeah, you know, I, I can see a major director doing it, and uh, you know, just on the name alone, you could you could make some money. Who knows? Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, exactly. Um, Buy his wine. <laughs> yeah. Buy his good wine. Cop- good wine. It is. Um, now, there are reality competition shows for just about everything these days, from cooking to tattooing to glass blowing. And as of this week, Shonen Jump is getting in on the action as well. Million Tag, Shueisha's new battle audition show, aims to discover the next star manga creator. It'll follow six teams, each made up of a prospective manga creator, or in one case, a duo. And a manga editor from Shueisha, as they compete in four challenges, the winning manga creator will receive a prize of 5 million yen, or about 45,000 US dollars, a manga serialization on the Shonen Jump Plus website, a compiled book volume of said manga, and an anime adaptation. What? Damn. If you ever were curious about the relative cost of anime adaptations... (laughs) They could just throw that in there. Yeah, we'll, we'll publish it. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you an anime. That's right. Yeah, we'll just make an anime out of it. Okay, <laughs> for as funny as I thought this was really starting to go, that's a hell of a package. Yeah. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, this is, you know, um, what this sounds like is, you know, you'll get a serialization for a volume. Yeah. And then they'll make an anime of that volume. Right, yeah, so like it's going to be an OVA. OVA. Or yeah, OVA. exactly right. Yeah, but um, still, but rather still than right, rather than know? getting getting yeah. in, getting to get published, and then all those individual steps to try and get to somebody to get into an adaptation mm-hmm. of any sort, yep. to just do this as one giant ball, like, yep. damn, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Now, Netflix is set to exclusively stream the eventual anime adaptation, which also explains why it's so cheap. And Netflix anime producer Kohei Obara will serve as a guest judge in the competition's final challenge. That's where the money's coming from. Um, guest judges for the final challenge will also include Chainsaw Man creator Tatsuki Fujimoto and Hell's Paradise Jigo Kuraku creator Yuji Kaku. The, oh, the show will run for eight episodes. I got that wrong. On the official... Oh, the, the, this is the, the competition. Um, on the official Weekly Shonen Jump YouTube channel, its first episode debuted yesterday morning. So you can go and check that out. Wow. Now... Unfortunately, it also dropped this week um, some creators talking about um, the rates Netflix is looking for its anime shows. And it turns out anime is uh, Netflix is asking for um, um, is, is basically offering something like uh, 20% less per cut than the lowest standard rate per cut in the industry. That's what they're paying. 20% less? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. They're asking, like, really low rates, um, even compared to, like, bottom rate stuff. Um, and probably banking on their name. And saying, well, you know, do you want to work on a Netflix show? So that kind of dropped this week. And other folks are saying, yeah, like, we, we've seen this too, that, like, they're the... The the Netflix is not paying out for for their anime series, which is in the industry being the way it is. That's not a good direction to go in. No, so sad. But uh, I know actually just improving on their anime choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say back in those, the days before they even had streaming, Netflix was so spark. With yeah. any kind of anime yeah. availability, mm-hmm. that I thought it was really kind of more of a golden age where you had started having Netflix animes and mm-hmm. Crunchyroll was you know sponsoring stuff, and I thought this is it's, for them to backtrack on this. It's a, uh, yeah, um, and that's all. Especially, you know, on especially Twitter when I, and... especially when I don't think they have any real legitimate reason to do so. That's the thing. That's the thing. I Just, I personally I suspect that Netflix has finally spread itself too thin. I think they have umpteen billion productions, not just anime, but just right, anime, yeah. so many yeah. things that there's just not enough money for each one. But now they're just squeezing everybody to be like, eh, mm-hmm. you'll yeah. make it cheaper, right? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, uh, this competition works out. Yeah. I'm sure it's obviously it'll be it'll be Japanese, but yeah, still I was hopeful for the competition. But yeah, like Netflix is doing things. Jeez, that's pretty sad. Yeah, yeah, very, very unfortunate. 
Also this week, other stories we wanted to mention potentially in passing. Uh, two new anime series were announced this week based on Square Enix properties, but no, neither of them are Final Fantasy. The classic RPG series Mana held a 30th anniversary live stream this week and revealed that Warner Brothers Japan is producing an anime adaptation of Legend of Mana, the fourth game entry in this series, and a very beloved one. Uh, the series will be titled Legend of Mana The Teardrop Crystal, which sounds to me like Magical Girl series, and will be produced by Grafinica and Yokohama Animation Lab, which previously produced the opening cinematic movie for the game's remastered version. So that's cool. The game series producer revealed that it was uh, actually because of the pitch for the animated series that the remaster was even created um, and promised that the people involved in the project still have the love for the series just the same as back then. Uh, Square Enix also launched a new mixed media project titled Deep Insanity, which, like any good mixed media project, will include a manga, which actually launched in February, a game, and a television anime. The anime is titled... Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, and is set to premiere this October with a story taking place in between the manga and the game. <laughs> the project set in a world overrun by a mysterious syndrome causing sudden comas and a mysterious underground realm opened up which might hold the cure. Huh. Nothing ever okay. ends. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, no. Um, <clears throat> nothing ever ends. The final episode of the new Fruits Basket anime adaptation aired this week. But guess what? A new anime is coming in 2022, centering on the backstory of Toru's parents. Of course. Of course. And it'll be called Kyoko and Katsuya's Story. Um, <laughs> the manga is also inspiring a stage play adaptation, also set to debut in 2022. Um, because, you know. Yeah. You gotta. <laughs> you gotta. <laughs> Yeah. Because fruits baskets uh, on ice can't come right. for the stage play. Exactly. So. Um, a new TV animation has been announced celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Takarotomi Arts and the Pretty series. The Watch Up Pre Magi series will premiere in October, and the inevitable accompanying card game will debut this fall. Uh, the new anime includes the classic motifs of song, dance, fashion, and adds a new theme of magic for the latest. Uh, one of those. Um, yeah. The Icky Tosin manga also had a TV and anime adaptation announced this week. The original Icky Tosin manga began in 2000 and it follows a high school girl with a magical sword that allows her to channel the spirit of an ancient Chinese hero as she fights students from other schools and they shred large, large portions of their clothes in the process. <laughs> the manga has inspired four previous <laughs> anime adaptations and five OVAs. Yep. With, with, with the, with, I mean, yeah. I yeah, wonder why. It, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. Oh, What's it's, the appeal? it's 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 just literature. Fun. Yeah, yeah it's classic <laughs> classic <laughs> literature. Right. There's a lot to be learned there. Yes, from, from all of the exposed boobage. Physics. Um, I'm physics, yeah. learning physics. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, How to define kinetic physics? Yeah. <laughs> Takes a lot Stop. Of, a lot of, a lot of <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you all know that the Gainax Bounce was inspired by Hao Miyazaki and Nausicaa the Valley of Wind? The, what? What? Yeah, we'll get back to that later. Toy Animation, what? Universal Wait, Music, what? and uh, Ageha Springs, a music production company, announced last week that they're partnering to launch a new Project Girls Rock Audition, which will include, include both anime bands and real bands. The companies are seeking vocalists, guitarists, bassists, drummers, and keyboardists to audition. The winning applicants will not only star as voice actors in the anime project, but will also form real-life bands to play at concerts and make their major label debut. Oh, making uh, the band done, Jap done Japan. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What I would love to see is Pete Lander Z somehow sneak onto the show. And like... <laughs> wow. Too many mics in Taco Taco Taco. There we go. CA. Um, wow. Director Seiji Mijushima, uh, Full Metal Alchemist and Mobile Suit Gundam 00, posted a teaser visual this week announcing a new film project made with the staff from the Expelled from Paradise film, which I have thoughts on. Um, along with Mijushima, this includes Toei Animation and writer Gen Urobuchi, known for Minoka Magica and Fate Zero. I have thoughts on Expelled from Paradise, but. Moving along. Um, Madhouse unveiled a new anime film project on Friday titled Goodbye Don Gleese. 
I don't know why they chose that title, but it looks charming. <laughs> Set to open sometime next year. Um, Atsuko Ishizuka of A Place Further Than the Universe and Pet Girl of Sakurazo will both... Yeah. <laughs> will write and direct as her first original anime film. It'll follow... Wait for it. A 15-year-old on the verge of adulthood at the beginning of summer vacation. Um, Ishizuka noted that after reaching Antarctica in a place further than the universe, she opened a map and looked for the exact opposite extreme and found Iceland. It was like, okay, that's where my next thing is going to be based. Sure. That makes sense. Um, Okay. (laughs) Last weekend's MAPPA Stage 2021 10th Anniversary event debuted a teaser trailer for a new original anime film written and directed by Mari Okada of O oh Maidens in Your Savage Seasons and wow. many other things. Um, Mari Okada is a very interesting voice. I'm actually just pulling up a little bit because um, I had some other info on here. Um, uh, she's been a writer in anime for, for well, since 1998. Um, worked on Hamtaro, um, Basilisk, Little Hamsters, Big Adventure, yeah. Hamtaro, uh, Rose Maiden, Trauma, and Fate Stay Night, Aria the Natural, Is something Natural Girls Club, eh. um, uh, True Tears, Vampire Knight, Toradora, um, Ooh. for whom she did series composition, um, also Black Butler, um, Gosik, Fractale, uh, Wandering Ooh. Sun, Hanasako Iroha, Aquarian Evol, Anohana, Black Rock Shooter, oh, <laughs> AKB48, the woman called Fujiko Mine, Pekoro Sakurazo, mm. so forth and so on. Uh, also a little show called Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, um, and um, has done a couple of different anime films, uh, including Makaya When the Promised Flower Blooms. Uh, so, the new anime will be titled Alice and Teresa's Illusory Factory. It'll be a first love Fantasia story following characters fighting through an uncertain world with love as their weapon. Which intrigues me. Um, this week's issue of Kodansha's Weekly Shonen Magazine revealed that all 131 volumes of Hajime no Ippo have finally gotten digital releases as of Thursday. Wow. And that all future chapters will also <clears throat> launch digitally as well as physically. It is the first time in the manga's 33-year history all of its chapters are available digitally. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of manga. <laughs> <laughs> 131 volumes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You'll spend um, the next 33 years reading Yes. Um, and, and that's one of those manga that's been going back a long ways. So going back and finding the material, digitizing it, I'm sure that was a whole yeah. new process. So yeah. that's really, really cool. Um, Hajime no Ippo, classic boxing manga. Um, now, stories about the children of beloved protagonists are becoming quite the popular thing these days. And 2002's yeah. classic mermaid melody Pitchy Pitchy Pitch manga is the next to join the fun. Pink Hanamori will begin the new mermaid melody Pitchy Pitchy Pitch Aqua manga in August, featuring a new romance. Pitchy Pitchy Pitchy. Exactly. Pitchy Pitchy Pitchy. Uh, starring Lucia's daughter. Um, One Piece Books announced last week released an audio book uh, with the Rising of the Shield Hero light novel series. Oh, huh. Yeah. Um, the audiobook features narration from actor Kurt Kanazawa and is now up on audiobooks.com with plans to soon be available on Apple Books, Audible, Nook, Audi- Audiobooks, and Spotify. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense for light novels. Um, you know, a lot of folks are, I think, a little intimidated by light novels, but, you know, you're in your car, on a, on a commute, yeah. They, yeah. they should burn through quickly. Um, now, the Anime Tourism Association had to skip its annual online survey, and yes, there's a thing called the Anime Tourism Association. Um, they had to skip its annual online survey of noteworthy anime pilgrimage sites in 2020 due to COVID-19. Yeah. Um, the survey's oh, returned this year, <laughs> exactly. Um... COVID what? No. Yeah. What, what, what's this thing? What? Yeah. Would, would that impact tourism? Um, <laughs> no, not at all. Nah. Yeah. So the survey is returning this year for its fourth run. Uh, starting last week, 23 September, votes are being accepted from anime fans around the world to select the Japanese anime 88 spots, a list of favorite places to become famous as a scene for an anime. And 14 randomly selected voting participants will receive sacred anime spot tour support funds. What? With the first prize winner receiving a 30,000 yen prize, second place 10,000 yen. 
Um, they are required to provide the association with photos and reports of their visit to the sacred anime spot as a condition oh. for receiving the prize. Gotcha. Um, so a way of kind of encouraging folks to, to document the thing. Uh, the Macross Super Dimension 30, 3D Live World Tour Air concert videos featuring Macross 7 and Macross Delta are both streaming worldwide on the official Macross YouTube channel with English subs this week. Nice. Uh, they feature footage from the anime series plus 3D animated song performances from the Uto Macross smartphone game. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Really cool to see that. That's all the news for the week. Thank you all for watching. See you next week. <laughs>